naturally inclined to be attacking players and some of you prefer the more positional approach in uh, um, you know squashing your opponent positionally and then winning the game with every small advantage that you get really good to see you hey Cappy hey Calvin hey Sidant so so good to see you <laughs> All right, so I've chosen a number of games that we will be taking a look at. Um, anything from, let's get my list of games. I have the dates with me as well. Attacking chess, anything from 1860, where Adolf Anderson played, um, all the way to 2005. So we're gonna be taking a look at, at games from Bobby Fischer, Judith Polger, uh, Sergei Karyakin, and uh, a couple other well-known names. So, pretty excited. Finally, Tyrone. Interesting. Yes, yeah, so uh, South African internet and such. My power was out until about a couple minutes ago. So then I had a chance to just set up. <laughs> uh, is this where I can learn how to blunder my rook in style? Hmm. Uh... I, I was more thinking along the lines of how to sacrifice your rook and win a very classy game, um, but to each their own, I suppose. But let's begin. I want to jump straight into it. And we're going to be taking a look at these games. And at some point, I will stop and ask you to identify a tactic that was played um, by, of course, uh, the winner of the game. And we're always going to see it from their perspective. So here in this game, Adolf Anderson played against Berthold Sule. Sule? Here we go again with the names. <laughs> All right. And I chose a lot of um, games that have openings that I can relate to and most often uh, statistically lead to a very active attacking uh, a game more like tactical um, resources being available in in such in such openings. Load shutting is the worst. <laughs> All right, so let's go. <clears throat> e4. Don't we love a good e4? Those of you who play d4, I am not judging you at all. Continue to play d4. <laughs> And we have e5, knight f3, knight c6, normal stuff. Um, as we all know, in the opening, all we have to do is control the center, develop our minor pieces, minor pieces being your knights and your bishops. And why I'm bringing up the opening principles right now is it's absolutely important to develop your pieces because when attacking, you need every single piece that you have um, or possibly can get involved in the attack to be involved and uh, especially when you you're attacking and you get really excited about an attack it's important to not just leave uh, all your pieces be behind and go ahead with your queen because one queen heading into an enemy camp that has many good defenders isn't going to be a very strong queen at that so what we're going to try and do is get our pieces towards the center and that way, wherever the king heads, whether to the queen side, when queen side castling, or whether to, whether he goes to the king side, um, we will be able to then decide with our centralized pieces how to go about moving forward. And uh, we'll see exactly how to do that. Bishop c4. Is that around earth? Yeah, so um, I went I went shopping the other day and minding my own business. And uh, obviously I had the mentality of a flat earther because the earth in my head was always flat, you know. And it made me wonder if the earth was round and you were standing on the opposite end of the earth, shouldn't you just fall off? And that was the logic behind me thinking the earth was flat. And so I continued to walk around the shop and saw this round thing. I went closer and thought it was a basketball. Turns out it was a globe. And I was so fascinated by this globe that I decided to purchase it. 
And now, as it sits on my bedside table, I look at it every day and realize the earth is, in fact, round. And uh, I'm obviously joking. I know the earth has always been um, round to all of you flat earthers <laughs> out there. Yeah. <clears throat> no passive aggressiveness detected. Uh, sure. Okay. Oh, towards d4. Not at all. Bishop c5. And uh, we get a normal uh, looking uh, opening that could lead to any uh, opening at the stage, we can have the Evans Gambit, we can have the Italian, we can have the Greco Piano, Guccio, Guccio, Gucci, <laughs> round or sphere, it's spherical, of course. <laughs> C3. I would also play c3 in this position, but in this game he decided to play the Evans Gambit. And Evan was obviously a great guy and decided to play a gambit and name it the Evans Gambit because he wanted people to know his name. And what is a gambit? A gambit is giving up material in the beginning of the game um, in order to gain space. Or time in terms of tempo moves or quick development on attack and here he decides to uh, get the bishop away from the center temporarily um, provoking the bishop to capture the pawn and that's exactly what he did in order to quickly get a c3 d4 on the board and he decides to play bishop c5 I've also seen bishop a5 being played in that position and castles now, I don't know how good it is to play a move like d4 in this position. Let's see the evaluation. Yeah, it should be absolutely equal. And after capturing, capturing and check, we should have something like a bishop d2. No train smash. All right, coming back, decides to castle instead. Getting the king safe is so, so important. There's no way that you can expect to have a successful attack when your king is in more danger than your opponent's. So if you want to go ahead and attack the black king as the white pieces, and you decide to suddenly just push all the pawns on the king's side, expecting some kind of attack, you have to remember the concessions that you're making as well. And the fact that you're moving the pawns in front of your king mean that you're also putting your own king in danger. So you have to obviously think about that before making a decision like that. So I would say that it's possible to have some kind of pawn storm on the king's side when the king, both kings are castled, when you have enough minor pieces and major pieces being able to compensate the loss of the protection of the king. <clears throat> I have a map and it's flat as it gets. Um, there are some things that we can we can learn uh, from from a flat map per pet. Also, bishop e7, which is considered the best. So, bishop e7 in the position that Tyrone is referring to right now. Uh, one second. All right, over here after c3, bishop e7 is a, another possibility although black has probably decided to keep things a little bit more active than a passive looking move like bishop e7 probably the idea behind bishop e7 is not only bring it back to safety but also after move like d4 um captures captures there's a possibility of playing knight f6 and bishop g5 would no longer put a pin on the queen but rather um, still allow knight takes e4 if he really wants to. So it makes sense that bishop e7 is the best move. But let's continue with the actual game. We get castles. My king is never in danger. He is the danger. I love that comment. Nice porco. All right, let's see how black decides to continue here. D6 is a very natural looking move. 
All right, so d6 allows the bishop to develop. And there's something in chess called prophylaxis. And prophylaxis basically means um, finding a move that is going to prevent your opponent's plan uh, from from developing or at least uh, stopping your opponent from from trying anything here and to stop the move bishop g4 it would be wise to play a move like h3 h3 would be considered a prophylactic move here because it both prevents the bishop from going to g4 and later on a potential back rank checkmate so just relieving the king a bit now it may seem like you're kind of weakening your king slightly by playing h3 um but yes, uh, it's okay to, to weaken your, your king slightly in a position like this. h3 is completely normal. But h3 was not played in this position. d4 was played instead. And here we go. When is it okay and when is it uh, good to open up the center or attack the center? When is it a good idea to open the center? And that's a question for you guys. I'm only seeing the YouTube chat right now. Really good to see all of you. Thanks for joining us. When the king is in the middle, after your opponent does, okay. <clears throat> Early as possible. A bad student, <laughs> why? Can I take back what I said? Uh, no, you cannot. No, no backseas, unfortunately. Okay, so it's a good idea to open up the center. Um, <laughs> bloody friends channel. <laughs> D4 is a good idea. Well, opening up the center in general is a good idea when you are threatening to attack the the open king, right? So here, in this particular position. Black hasn't castled yet, yet white has castled safely. So after exchanging on d4 in this position, and now I can't make any moves on the board. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Ah, oh, technology is the worst. All right, taking on d4, taking, and after the bishop retreats, we can easily threaten with rook e1 to open up the e-file uh, with a future e5 and attack the king. So it's always a good idea when your king is safe and your opponent's king is not safe to open the center as quickly as possible. As ASAP as possible. <laughs> yeah. After 10th move, that's uh, very specific, very specific. If your opponent plays knight takes b4 instead of bishop takes b4, I think the same thing applies. The whole point of b4 is to have a piece 
capture it so that you could gain time with an easy c3. In this position, c3 is possible, but black is free to make any development de developmental move. I think I need to switch languages. This is very important. It's, it's time to speak Afrikaans or French or something else, right? Or Spanish. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, knight to f6 is possible, but here after b4, bishop takes b4, or knight takes b4, we have a c3 move chasing away the knight. If he doesn't do anything about um, the knight, then we just capture the knight, and if he moves the knight back, we still get b4, uh, d4, right? Exactly. So let's go back to the game. d6 and d4 captures captures bishop e6 and what do you think white will play in this position what do you think white play in this position and it wasn't rook e1 as suggested it was a different move Alrighty. Hi, Achnoid. C3, knight f6, d4. Anyway, exactly. Bishop b5. In this position, bishop b5. He would be moving a piece twice in the opening. The pin the horse. Oh my goodness. Knight c3 or bishop b2. Fair enough. But here, white is opted to push black's pieces back. Yes, exactly, Oliver. So, has opted to play the move d5. And after d5, he moves the knight to a5. And uh, you would think that bishop b5, Papette's favorite move, would now take place, but something else happens here. <laughs> Which word should I use, coach? Sarah, good to see you. Are you are you learning stuff? You're learning a lot with us. <laughs> How's the marbles going? Oh my goodness. Exactly, Bishop B2. So Bishop B2 is simply putting pressure on G7 and threatening to capture the rook on the next move that's why if black decides to just take the bishop here it would be a completely bad move since uh, there's no way to stop losing or stop uh, white from capturing the rook right so knight a5 and bishop b2 continues with knight f6 both developing see this as a multi-purpose move because in chess what we want to try and do is not only play moves that are active, but also try to cover a lot of principles, or as many principles as, um, as you can at once. So it's developing, it's protecting or attacking, right? We're also preparing to castle. So in this case, if we had to talk about knight f6 in particular, it would be developing, defending the g7 pawn, Preparing for castling, controlling the center, attacking on e4, that's already five things. The more things your move does, the better the move would be. Right. And also you can realize here that white decided to counter this attack on c4 with bishop b2. So it was a counterattack. Instead of just going defensive, 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 decided to just play a very active move. Okay, let's continue. Knight f6, bishop to d3, and bishop g4. Then we have knight c3, 
c6. Okay, I wouldn't think c6 is such a great move um, by Berthold. Berthold. His name's Berthold. Maybe it's Berthold. <laughs> c6, because the king is still not safe. The king is still not safe. And white is one move away from completely developing all these pieces and uh, connecting the rooks. And that is when you know you've completed your development. Hey, Amadeus, good to see you. Winning as usual. I'm here to learn chess. Okay. Then uh, you should play a little bit of chess after the lesson. The best way uh, to put into practice what you've learned is to play chess immediately after the lesson, you know? You were thinking about d5 but was afraid to say it. Never be scared. c4 is tactically defended. I like that. I've never heard it being phrased that way. Calm. Should I be aggressive while speaking about attacking chess? Can be aggressive. So this stream is available on YouTube as well as... Rookie One is nice. Very nice. As well as uh, twitch.tv forward slash coachess. So coachess twitch. Instead of rookie one here, decided to play the move knight to e2. And the reason for knight e2, what I'm assuming, it's not a move, a conventional move, I would not even consider playing it myself, mainly because bishop takes knight is a possibility here for black. But also what I'm thinking is just both opening up the diagonal for the bishop, as well as giving the knight the opportunity to reposition to either g3 or f4 defending, uh, depending on how white chooses to continue his potential attack on the king. Because the king is still in the center. What to do? So black decides to castle. Would you take the knight right now? Would you take the knight? As black. More arrows. <laughs> Aggressive. More yelling and breaking stuff. I don't think I have anything to break. All I have in front of me is this puzzle box. And I, I don't think I want to break it. And a book. But you can't break a book. It's a book. <laughs> Die. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Sorry, that's enough arrows. Two is enough, right? Two is a two two is two is a couple. Two, three is a crowd. What? <laughs> would look fun, but most of your pieces are on the wrong side of the board. Why would you say that, Burrito? The more you arrow, the more we learn. Alright. So we see that the white knight wants to move. The bishop is attacking the knight, but here the knight and the bishop aren't really doing much because the knight can't go here or here. Um, we can also see that the queen has potential along this diagonal in the future, of course, once black castles. The rook, the rooks will look better on c1 and e1 at some stage. Maybe the queen will move. Um, of course, we are still thinking about h3, and if the bishop moves back to, to h4, I don't know if g4 would be a good try, although white is putting in a lot of effort to bring the knight to the king's side, so potentially g4 is an idea. Is that enough arrows for you? <laughs> You're learning. Learning. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> are there white knights in chess? There are two white knights and two black knights. It's a work of art. I painted this picture for you in honor of um, Anish Giri, the draw master, the uh, minister of arts and culture. <laughs> uh, 
I'm, I'm glad you enjoy the arrows. All right, so let's actually see what happened here. So castling and queen d2. Queen d2 is so, so interesting. And what I'm thinking here is that after taking, right, um, and maybe black decides to go ahead and, and try and attack on the king's side, I guess white just has king h1 immediately and threatening rook g1 to attack on g7. So at some stage, even after a move like queen h4, I suppose uh, white could just continue, right? Some are better for white, but what, what does white do here? Wait, what? Never in a million years would I have thought of playing that. In this position, ninety three. Apparently not. Okay, glam drink. The arrows are not worth a half a point, or the title. <laughs> Rook g1, interesting, but believe it or not, there's a hanging piece in the position. Can you spot it? Electric horse, good to see you. Sarah, see if you can get it. There's a hanging piece in the position. F2, F2 is like a loose tooth, but that you don't mind losing. Because you know that another tooth is going to grow straight after that. Nice. Good job. Rook c1 is not going to do as much as you wanted to at this stage. I think Sarah ran away. Exactly. Bishop c3 is the answer. Reason being, the knight is under attack, so that's why it's a good move. But here, instead of all of this happening, after queen d2, there's rook c8. Rook c8, and the position is still completely equal. Okay. And of course, white is deciding to go full force uh, with an attack. And uh, which piece would you like to introduce to the attack first? It's a move probably I would make as well, especially in a blitz game. It's easy to see, it's just um, heading straight on. There are no letters and numbers on the board. I can help you with that. So the bottom left hand side is A1, the top left is A8, uh, the top right hand side is H8, and the bottom right is H1. The horsey. I would like to ask the white knight for help. There's no call a friend here. And the other squares? Cool. Looks like a conspiracy map. Now you can see the letters. The thing is, the board is not square. You see, it's round edges. And if you capture the letters with the numbers, you get this like little block or like little part of the board that you see. And it's it's not the board, but little part that's white. And my OCD cannot handle that. <laughs> yeah, that is why I cut it all off. Oh, you can? I, I'm not sure about that setting on the uh, chest 24. Hey, Giant Pixels. I'm Mariah. Good to see you guys. My G5. Queen G5. If you mean Queen G5, then perfect. Nice heppel. Queen G5 and Bishop takes Knight. Finally. Right? And we speak about structural damage to White's King. 
And you'd think that after everything I've said, then White should not actually intentionally open up the king like this. However, I believe Adolf Anderson has a plan. He's a man. With a plan. King h1, like we mentioned, rook g1. And now it should get interesting. Now it should get so, so interesting. And we went, we went over this. It was Game of the Century uh, with Bobby Fischer from um, 19 something something <laughs> but it was game of the century with bobby fisher playing the black pieces and uh, the the whole concept is called windmill pun P P what pun huh nice tyrone nice exactly was it, I thought it was in 1960s, 1958, got it. Okay, queen takes g7, exactly. Knight takes g7, rook takes on g7, and we continue, king h8. How are we going to continue here? Hey, Ulan. And can King's Casper. What's next? Yes, he's Anderson with a Plandison. Got it. <laughs> yeah, Rook takes F seven. Um, seems to seems to win, but apparently it doesn't. I think Queen F six is a move. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? I think it is. No, that's not Queen F six. What is it? Ah, just pushing the pawn. Okay, got it. So that doesn't work, but instead Rook G eight works. Indeed, taking. Rook g1, queen g5, and mate. 95. <laughs> it's okay. Has to be double check. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. All right, moving on to the next game, shall we? Now we have Robert James Fisher, as we know as good old Bobby Bob. Bobby Bobster versus Reuben Fine. And this game was played in 1963, 60s and the 70s is where Bobby thrived. Uh, his chest was booming. And Bobby here played white pieces against Reuben. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and another bishop c4, bishop c5, and b4. We have another Evans gambit on our hands. If Bobby Fisher played it, why can't we? It was a beautiful checkmate, right? Star Princess, good to see you. <laughs> okay, bishop takes and c3. And this time he decided to play bishop to a5. And the reason I think bishop a5 is quite interesting is because d4 is not quite possible, possible anymore. After taking on d4, um, you would have to take with a knight. You can't take with a pawn, although you would... Um, prefer a pawn center to a knight center so probably delaying this move um, a bit by castling first he decides to play d4 this was played what okay i honestly thought he was going to castle first is this not the best move in the position i have so many questions he played d4 anyway and then castles the audacity of this guy. Robert James Fisher, everybody. Nineteen seventy five for sure. Hundred percent. That's why he didn't show up. I mean you would think that the conditions weren't suitable for him, but his actual 
reason is that he is just too good to show up. Italian game? Nope, it is the Evans Gambit. Lionel with a spoon. Okay, castle and taking on c3. What's next? What would you play now with white pieces? Sack the bishop on on f7? Why? Is it the Jerome's back gambit? So we, we play the Evans gambit and the Jerome gambit, gambit in one game. Seems good. Seems fair. Bishop a3 would be met by move like d6. Simply. Here, yeah, queen b3. The reason bishop takes f7 is a bit ambitious is that after king takes us, no queen d5 winning the bishop because the knight is protecting. So here instead queen b3 was played. And now queen e7, just defending the f7 pawn. How rude. Knight takes c3. And knight f6 is apparently the biggest blunder in the world. Why is that? For 10 marks. Ah, uh, okay. Interesting. And now, <laughs> it's not bishop f7. <laughs> it ain't. <laughs> nope. But why b3 specifically? The queen to b3? Because you want to put pressure on f7. And beyond that, you're also developing the queen and uh, you're plotting world domination. Flip, I knew this. 95! Exactly. One can dream. Uh, you're a dreamer. But you're not the only one. <laughs> that was terrible. I take it back. Knight takes knight and pawn takes. And... We have 95. And how do we deal with 95? And the answer is not yet. No backsies. Imagine all the people. Bishop g5, get aggressive. So the thing is with bishop g5, there's a bit of a tactic here. Knight takes. King takes. And queen takes. So you gotta be careful about your pieces. That's why knight takes knight is played. Queen takes and what? The move is drum roll. Have you yeeted a board at your opponent before? Have yeeted a board at Planty many times? Pen. No, wait. Okay, I'll wait. Rookie one. The queen will take. Well, the bishop will take. That rook is undefended. Exactly. Bishop b2 is played here. And queen g5, followed by the amazing h4. Now h4 is very, very obscure. Usually we think about putting pressure on the king immediately, even if it gives up the exchange, that king is going to have to move. But instead, h4 to distract the queen from its ideas and plans, only to capture on g7. After rook g8, now, what are we going to do? What are we gonna do? 
What are we gonna do? This is very strange. A lot of these moves really get you thinking. Hmm. Now we sack the exchange, exactly. But he doesn't take it. He plays king d8. This move is so beautiful. I'm gonna like leave it up to you guys. Wait. You're lost? I'll step back. I'll wait for you. <laughs> Not queen a3, but correct piece. I hate that, that familiar familiarity. Familiarity. I'll get English someday. And like you find something very familiar and you just can't on you can't remember. It's like one of those messed up pictures that you just know that you can name an object in the picture, but it's impossible. The picture was created to mess with your mind. Familiarity. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll get it right. Nailed it. <laughs> I'm from South Africa. Yeah, he found Queen G three, and that is correct. Uh, I was waiting for both chats to get it because we have Twitch chat and YouTube chat. So queen g3 is the answer. Very, very good stuff. Because what happens after queen takes queen, we have checkmate on f6. And uh, attacking the queen. Where's the queen going to go? The queen doesn't have, an, doesn't have an escape square. And here, black simply resigns. And Bobby gave off a small smile like this. Moving on. And we have one of my personal favorite uh, players playing white pieces against Alexei Shirov. The one and only Judith Pogo playing white here against Alexei Shirov. And this game was played in 1995. I wasn't even born yet. Super sleek. Emotions. I'm shocked. <laughs> Twitch chat and get it. It's okay. Cannot find this on YouTube. So apparently it's on this on the wrong name or like labeled under Kistoni, which was a small mistake. But um, I mean on the on the admin end, I take full responsibility. So today my name is Kistoni. <laughs> okay, Zuma, Zuma. Oh my goodness. Also, I wasn't even at university yet in 1995. How old are you? Aren't you born in 96? Or nine, 2000? Jokes. <laughs> there we go. Thanks. Alrighty, so let's begin. This game is very short. 21 moves short. Let's go. e4, g6. d4, bishop g7. Knight c3. Best way, if someone gives you the center, take it with both hands. And another thing I want you to remember is that if you castle on the king's side and your opponent castles on the opposite side, on the queen side intentionally, you have full right to go with your pawns. So I'm going to make some arrows again because we love those things. So if you castle on the king's side and your opponent castles on the queen side, you have absolute free reign to move all your pawns up the board because you have no king to protect. And in that case, you can even sacrifice a pawn or two to open up the lines and completely attack them with a rook. And you'll get your other pieces involved. Your pawns will not be the only ones uh, doing the dirty work. You also get your pieces involved, your bishops as well. This is what you want to do. You're going to get all your pieces and throw them. Yeet them at the king. Always. More. <laughs> yep. So knight c3. Sounds like an AI strategy. 
those are the five head strats. Okay, c6, bishop c4, d6. Still, queen f3, go Judith Polga. e6, knight e2, b5. He has to attack somewhere, decides to attack with b5, bishop retreats, and a5. What is the best way to deal with something like this? Where black is pretty much threatening to play a4. Trapping the bishop. What are we going to do to relieve the bishop? I would play the same Tyrone, an electric horse. Exactly. a3 is the move that was played, just giving the bishop a square on a2, keeping the pressure on this diagonal. Next we have bishop a6 and d5. Finally, op trying to open the center here. Of course, we want white's king to uh, quickly make it to safety, although it does make sense that he wants to open the center because white can immediately castle. Black still has to develop the knight before attempting to castle. So black takes, white takes back, and e5, closing down the center. Not good enough. What does white play here? The reason I looked at the move is because I had an idea, and uh, my idea seemed to be good. What about yours? Oh my gosh, Papette. Yes. You're low key, Judith Polga. Castle's interesting. I do play a manga sometimes on my personal channel. Well, thankfully, you can't make polls. Thank the good gosh. Yes, exactly. A lot of you have suggested knight e4, and that's exactly the move that Dudu had made. And here, queen c7, still protecting the d6 pawn, but developing the queen somewhat. c4. And ambition strikes. The plan behind c4, the master plan, continues bishop a4, knight d7, and knight c3. King e7. Wow. King e7. What I thought here was king knight e7 attempting to castle, but white is also keeping their king in the center. So we'll see what happens. King e7 is so interesting. I'm stopping once again. What does white play? I don't want to say our, because then you're going to be like, who else? And there's like five members of our channel. Oh my goodness. Yeah. The plant behind the, the plan, ninety five. I like that move. Nice stuff, Sarah. This one is a sacrificial move, though. Sacrificial move. Stunks here. Yeah, bishop c6 isn't um, sacrificial. Not that sacrificial. Hangs mate. In one. I was trying to figure out your username and I didn't break it up. So I thought that, that yeah. My brain did something weird there, but very good. So knight takes d6 is in fact 
the move that was played, queen takes, and the other knight jumps into e4. Queen takes on d5. What does white do? Stopping again. I'm ready for d1. Fair enough. Very good. And it gains a tempo as well. Because with bishop g5, we have rook d1 in mind, but it's also check. So the knight goes to f6, and the rook goes to d1. Glamdring not only uh, channels his inner Judith Polgo, but is in fact Judith Polgo, secretly. Queen goes to b7. Now... What? Yep. So welcome Judith to the chat. A sacrifice, a sacrifice I'm winning for black. Sure. We want to win for white though. Exactly. So knight d7. Very good stuff. Queen takes. Bishop takes and h6 attacking the bishop. Queen simply moves to d1 and the game is over. Here black resigns and uh, white is victorious, of course, the threat is queen d6. And how to stop it? GG's. Alright. Let's see something. e5. Oh, this is the same game. Okay, we have time for one more game. And this game is going to be between Sergei Karyakin and Vasily Borisovich Malinin. Zero botch life. 2002. 2002. So uh, Sergei was probably really young at this stage, probably 13, 14. And now he became... Grandmaster at a very young age. <laughs> the knight known as Rook. What? What? All this ignoring of checks is confusing me. Sometimes a check is good. Sometimes it's good to have a check at hand when needed but not necessary to always check when you see one. That sounds like an absolute riddle. What, Puppet? Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm from uh, South Africa. Okay, let's begin. So if Sergei playing white pieces against Vasily, and Sergei's rating was already 2500. He's playing against a 2400 here. So knight c6 and e5. Very interesting choice of opening here. Knight takes and we get... Uh, it has transposed to a scotch. And queen h4. I never see queen h4 in the scotch. Never in my life. Knight c3. Protecting the e4 pawn. Very important. And bishop b4. Renewing the threat on e4. So here the bishop is putting a pin on the king and uh, we can see that the the knight cannot move to protect the pawn anymore so this defense does not does no longer exist so it'd have to play something like bishop to d3 but then uh, it's a bit of a problem that the knight could just take the knight so then do we take on c6 first do we move the knight to f5 or f3 but then the queen would just continue to take on e4 so what do we actually do here we can't play f3 so maybe queen d3 or queen f3 is a good idea but then again the knight so perhaps d3 is the best square for the queen should we play it <laughs> you have to go enjoy this oh thanks thanks sarah you're from north africa cool cool cool, cool. blinded by arrows Arrows are pretty, right? Hmm. 
makes sense, but instead White decided to play bishop to e2, giving up the pawn at e4. But what happens if he takes on e4? Is it any good? Is it any good? Move he has knight b5. Knight b5. Still better for white. Interesting. So here we have knight f6, castling, and bishop takes c3. And knight f5, attacking on g7, attacking the queen. Never mind the captured piece at c3, although we consider it an intermezzo, a zwechensuch, if you must, uh, an intermediate move. Queen takes e4 and bishop to d3. And now what's nice is the e-file is completely open and it's what white wants in order to attack the king that's at e8. So the queen goes to g4, but it's not enough. Here we play f3, renewing or just attacking the queen again. What I was thinking is that we could just take... Why did we play that? We didn't play that. Who's here? <laughs> okay. We can take the bishop on c3, and then we can play rook e1. Queen a4, taking on c3, and they castled, they castled the king. What can we do? I've seen this game before. This is a magnificent game. This is an immortal game. All Bobby Fischer games are immortal. And a 13. makes chess colorful we are supporting a lot of communities today masterpiece of arrowness something i would say you need to have more arrows than robin hood unpossible no i mean prior to this glamdering oh my goodness prior to this because when you prepare, of course you are going through the game, but when there is an idea that gets you excited here, you just remember. Because I, I remember it was a couple years ago, I was in Cape Town at the time, I was during a chess event, and uh, oh, it might not have been this game, but it was definitely inspired by this game that a local player had showed us. This game he was so proud of and has spoken about for as long as i mean from the time he played the game to present day but we all gathered around uh, the kitchen counter as he explained every single detail of the game and then my opponent started sweating and this and this and this but i absolutely love these descriptive expressive stories because i'm like wow i wish i could be a storyteller like this guy uh, maybe one day when i'm old and wise then I could do the same. And uh, you just listen and you're like laughing at the jokes. Or sometimes a moment's not even funny, but just the way it's told, it's like, ha <laughs> Yeah. Who is the player? From South Africa, Lyndon Boer. Cape Town is beautiful. It is. It's good to love the game. As l for as long as you both shall live. Yeah, married to chess. Rip. So castling, and the move is drum roll, everyone. Drum roll chat. Not knight h6, but knight g7. Knight g7 was played. And what I love about this move, it reminds me of kind of uh, Paul Murphy's philosophy uh, when he played uh, the game of the century, the opera game, that when your opponent is grossly underdeveloped and there's no way that they will be able to um, kind of stop your attack, but not only that, but you have the opportunity to give away material only because of their undeveloped pieces. They're playing those pieces down and you can afford to sacrifice. So here knight g7, king takes and bishop h6, sacrificing yet another piece, king takes. What happens now? What is the continuation? Clamdering. Burr. It's cold in here. There must be some French defense in the atmosphere. 
No, I was gonna play um, a French game with Peter Lecco, but decided not to. Yeah, queen d2 is the move. And after king h5, the king is making its way up the board. You know, the king is also an attacking piece, but not in the middle game. There are too many pieces on the board to attack the king for the king to actually be an attacking piece. So what's next? Does it play itself? Does the rest of the game play itself? Very nice. G4. Knight takes G4. Since uh, white had given up two pieces, black can afford to give back a little. What happens now? What? What happens now? Very important that you're playing accurate moves. What is my rating? Nothing compared to my teaching skills, yeah? <laughs> Trickier now. Yeah, so we're taking on g4 and queen takes. King h1. And now black just wants to develop. There comes the c8 bishop. Rip. French references. And I don't want to give away the rest. So go ahead. Queen takes g4 would be inconvenient. It's barely an inconvenience. What are you talking about? Bishop b2? I like that. I really, really like that. But apparently white had more in mind here. So bishop b2 may win the queen, but... Big, big but. Mimicking Agamotto. What do you mean mimicking? Oh, with, oh, gotcha. No, it was just an accent attempt. Ha ha ha. Hangs made in one. A pawn. You're going to move a pawn. It's not the pawn that moves. Very nice, Kings Casper. Very nice. Both of you have gotten it, and we have rook f6 on the board. And the reason for that is that we're threatening queen h6, and now queen to g5, just stopping that checkmate idea. And now your favorite move, bishop to e2, and the bishop goes to g4, trying to stop it. But it's not enough. And after this very final move, black resigns. Black resigns. Drum roll. Very good. Very, very good. Bravo. We have bishop takes g4. Bishop takes bishop. Because, of course, if the king were to go to h4, what would happen? We could probably just play rook h6. And if the queen took, we have checkmate. So that's a really nice end to a beautiful game. GG's to Sergei Karyakin. Imagine finishing off a game OTB and you just turn to your opponent and you're like, GG's in the chat. And then he looks around and he's like, what chat? And you say, well, I've been playing online for the past seven months. Please excuse me. And then you have a dramatic moment and you're like, rip, kappa. Huh? <laughs> okay, that's enough of my lameness. But I really hope you guys learned something today about attacking chess. The best defense is a counterattack, in my opinion. Always find the least active piece. Don't just attack with one piece. You got to get all your pieces involved in an attack. Make sure your king is safe before all else. Always control the center. The one who controls the center controls the game. And never be afraid to attack. And there's always a tactic on the board. So that's why it's better to not only play longer time controls. But also it's important to take your time but good luck to everyone playing in the world online schools chess tournament it's creeping up on you 
two, three months to go. That's pretty exciting, but it's always a pleasure to be here with you guys uh, talking about some educational stuff. So uh, check again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>